Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for November 15th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. Good evening, council, administrators, and our wonderful audiences here today. Great audience today, which is awesome. It's a nice change. So, uh, Mr. Bridge will be acting as our clerk, and I emphasize the word acting. Pretending. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, when you're ready, would you call roll, sir? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Councilman Cobb? Uh, Mike Mayor Robert? Here. Councilman Grimm? I'm here. Councilman Nagelson? Here. Councilman Nogowski? Here. Councilman Rubal? Here. And Vice Mayor Cook? Here. We have six members present. All right, thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Vice Mayor Cook. If you will, please bow your heads. Our Heavenly Father. Please guide us tonight as we attempt to do business for the citizens of the great city. Please protect our first responders, our EMTs, our firefighters, our deputies, and our troops overseas. Thank you, Lord, for the good graces for which we have enjoyed the day. With that, we pray. Amen. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, we will need to accept the uh, minutes for the regular session on November 1st, 2021. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Grimm. Any discussion, questions, comments, counsel? When you're ready, sir. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Councilman Rosewald? Abstain. He was not present. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Nagelson? Yes. Uh, pass 5 to 0. All right, thank you very much, sir. Uh, before we jump down to item six, which is communications, uh, we're going to change things up a little bit uh, because Mr. Cobb is not here this evening. Um, so I'm going to ask council to uh, make uh, break rules of council to make a motion to reintroduce uh, previous ordinance. So moved. Second. Okay. So motion by Mr. Grimm, second by Ms. Eggleston to break rules of council. Council Yes. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Nagelson? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Passing 6 to 0. All right, thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor? Sir? I move that we reintroduce Ordinance 2021 42E for reconsideration. So second. Is it 42 or 46? 42. 42. Okay, I had it written down wrong. My apologies. So the first one's a very good rule for you Correct. And who's the second? Ms. Eggleston, who's your second? Oh, was it Mr. Rowe? Okay. Who is it, Mr. Rowe? Who is my second? Mr. Rowe, well, we'll give it to him. Peggy already had two. <laughs> on the board. Right. I'm uh, on the board. Nice score, Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Yes. Yes. Okay, that's been reintroduced. Um, did you want to go over that again? Yeah, no, read it for the record. Uh, so this is Ordinance 2021-42E. Uh, it was introduced at the last meeting as an emergency ordinance. It did fail by the one vote, so council did just go through the motion to bring that back in front of them tonight. So it reads an ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 and authorizing the city manager to purchase a secondary clarifier for the wastewater treatment plant. So an explanation of this legislative piece is we got some ARPA funds, which is the American Rescue Plan Fund, in the second uh, half of the funding from the government, federal government for the front of the review, and we decided to do some repairs on the wastewater plant uh, in order to help the capital on that was uh, in the term of the wastewater plant So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And I have a monetary limit of $20,000 to spend. So anything with $20,000 is what we're going to do. All right, thank you, sir. Council, any questions or comments before he calls for a vote? Yes. 
our share of this is how much? This one is uh, virtually zero. We may have uh, a little bit, depending on the pricing, but it'll be very minimal. 10, maybe 20,000 tops. And this will be the second one we replace? Second yeah, this will be the first secondary clarifier. We've already replaced one primary. And we have two more? Yep. What kind of shape are they? Uh, the same. They're all about, about 40 years old this year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Green. You want us? And huh? how did we get a, are we still in running for the grant for the other ones? Oh, we are approved for the 50% OPWC match for the second secondary clarifier. Okay. Thank you. No one else? No. When you're ready, sir. No? No, no one. Oh, who's first and second? We just got to reintroduce it. Yeah, we didn't. We did. We reintroduced it. Now we've got a vote. Mr. On. Mayor, I move we accept Ordinance 2021-42E. Hey, my apologies. I was a step behind myself. So, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Grimm, and second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Yes. Councilman Mason. Yes. Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Robol. Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. And Councilman Yes. Pass the 60 All right. Thank you very much. And then um, with uh, Mr. Cobb being out tonight for personal reasons, and then one of our other council members may have to leave for an emergency issue, uh, we're going to, I would ask council to break rules again to drop down to uh, ordinance 2021-46E. Uh, Since it is an emergency ordinance, uh, we would need to handle it while at least the rest of us are here in case one has to leave. So don't move. Second. Mr. Vice Mayor, your motion. Mr. Roadwall with your second. Just to reintroduce, uh, move it out to break the rules. This is, yeah, breaking rules, and then we'll, yes. So we will start with Mayor Wally. Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Nagelson? Yes. Councilman Robo? Yes. Councilman Robo? Yes. And Councilman Cook? Yes. So that passes 6 0, so we'll move that up on the agenda. Mr. Mayor? Sir. I move we accept ordinance 2021-46. Hang on. Grim Cook. All right. Uh, and this ordinance reads an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for city uh, health insurance and declaring emergency. So every year we have to do the same ordinance and we've got an insurance plan for our full time employees. We do see, uh, we did see a 9% increase this year, which is a little bit less than we were expecting. So we are good with that. Council has the numbers in front of them, and that's a good vote. All right. Council, any questions or comments before we go with the vote? And when you're ready, sir. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Nagelson? Yes. Councilman Nogowski? Yes. Councilman Rubel? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Sixty Zero. All right. Turned off. All right, now we go back up into our regular, uh, regular uh, function here. So uh, we did the minutes, so we'll jump down to communications. I believe that would be handed over to uh, Mr. Hutchinson. All right. So tonight we have, um, due to our uh, ordinance that we passed, uh, you are now our acting DZA board until we have full board members. So this is going to be your first case tonight. Uh, 907 West Lake. Do we have Roger? Okay, Roger's there. Um, so what this is, is a variance request for a rear setback, 907 West Lake Avenue. Um, and what they're uh, wanting to do is uh, add on to a garage. Basically, they're, it has a single car garage. They're going to do a two car garage with additional room in the back for, I believe it's a, a mudroom, laundry room. Um, you'll see there in the plans kind of breakdown. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty massive addition. It's almost the square footage of the, of the existing house now. Um, very odd shape of the parcel, though. It, it, it kind of um, it, it slopes down on the top. So at one point, the closest part uh, of this uh, of the building would be at 25 point, 27, or I'm sorry, 25.7 feet, and at the furthest point, it's 29. 
Uh, the rear setback is 40 foot in this. Now, like a lot of existing properties here in the, in the city, the codes came out after, you know, well after the houses existed. So there's a lot of non-conforming legal houses. Uh, this is one of them where the, the house itself barely sits 40 foot now. Um, and, and where that, uh, you can see on the over aerial map there, that parcel kind of begins where the house is all to the west of them. They're all within the, the houses themselves are in the 40. So it really puts a lot of people in a tight spot in those type of parcels. So um, this is something that's not really out of the ordinary. It's, it, it's, a, it's a common request. Um, so what, the, what they'll be requesting is a 25 foot rear setback that will give them the amount of room to, uh, to do the addition. They're good on the side. Uh, they're good on lock coverage, so they have plenty of room to spare for there. Um, so, uh, Steph recommends approving the request for a variance for a 25 foot rear setback. Uh, and then the applicant and the homeowner is here tonight if you have any questions for them. Council, any questions or comments? Yes. Good, sir. They're adding on to the garage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a single car garage existing now, and this will be a two car garage and extended to the rear as well. So, I'm looking at the aerial view, I see a driveway. One side of the building, that's where the addition would be. Is that, is that correct, Roger? Yes, that's correct. We're going to demolish the existing one car and then tear off the one that's not. That's the one that's not. Okay. And how far would that make it from the property line? Uh, for the rear, uh, the closest point will be 25.7 feet, 25 feet to the rear property line. That's at the closest part. Okay. So no issues with utilities or anything like that running behind the property. Okay, that was my only question. What, what would be the distance between the end of the garage or the side of the garage? I guess would be the what east side and the, the property line of the um, 905. Okay. Yeah, that's our minimum. That's yeah, that's the minimum setback for the side. Yeah. You're not worried about over improving. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Right. Then I would need a motion to accept. Motion to accept the uh, variant. Second. second. Motion by Mr. Grimm, second by Ms. Nelkowski. Are you recording right there? Am I, you have to record it. I guess I will. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, I, no, I have to record When you do your minute, you do you record it down? I, well, I play back the, I play back the, I play back the tape. So what is the motion on the floor? The motion is to approve. How much variance. are you seeking the variance for? How many 25 foot. But how, what's the minimum, 30? 40. 40, so he's seeking a variance of how many, how much, 15 how many feet? feet? 15 feet. So motion to accept the variance of 15 feet? Correct. And this, what's the address again? 907. 907. And we have the first. Mr. Uh, Mr. Grimm. Grimm. Mr. Grimm, second with Ms. Nowakowski. Okay, so we'll start with um, Councilman Rubble. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. And we'll go with Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilwoman Okowski. Yes. Okay, motion passes 60 to 0. I actually had one really important question on that, and I should have asked it before we voted. <laughs> Commissioner's out there, he just can't keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I said I had one quick question I should have asked before we voted. I mean, we're, we're adding on to this garage a pretty nice chunk. Uh, what kind of hot rod are we putting in there? <laughs> okay. All right. And um, back to you, Mr. Hutchinson. All right. So uh, next up, we have the council approval for a rezoning request to 200 East Lake Avenue. 
this was uh, approved by planning board. Uh, so the, it was on the October 12th. So the next step is to come to council for final approval. Uh, this was 2000, uh, 200 East Lake Avenue. As currently is OA, the request is zoning changed to central business uh, to, for allowed for retail. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, everyone's familiar with that property there. I got the maps there. Uh, uh, there are uh, a couple of speculations um, for this property. You may want to um, set forth as uh, as conditions. Uh, there is that is one of the very few properties uh, that is not connected to our utilities yet, as far as the sewer. Um, so uh, there was a 90-day notice set out to have that done, so it is required to be connected to our sewer system. Uh, so that would be uh, a recommendation for a condition for the approval. Um, also, there's on this property, uh, signage has already been installed um, prior to approval, uh, and half the signage that's up there now does not meet the code, so he will be coming back in front of you for a variance uh, for signage as well on that property. Um, yeah, Mark Kinsley, he's here tonight, so if you have any questions or anything for him on that. All right. Council, any questions or comments for Mr. Hensley? Uh, go ahead. Okay. So on tying into the city's uh, utilities, water and sewer, is that all cost fall on to Mr. Hensley? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the water's already connected, but sewer has, has never been connected. Oh, so water is there, not yeah. the sewer. Okay, and that all is his responsibility? Okay, thank you. So, if I may speculate, OA zoning, zoning does not allow a business there, but CD does. It doesn't allow retail. Okay. Yeah, it does. It allows professional businesses uh, and nursing homes. Uh, OA is kind of the transition zoning district between uh, retail business and residential. So all of Pike Street is actually OA is 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 zoned office. Uh, uh, office apartments. But all of Lake Avenue is business. Is CB, yeah. Across the street, the pool, everything up to Main Street, the entire Main Street is all central business zone. I see you have a sheet here listing all the properties within 200 feet. Did we need to get... So those, they were contacted for the, yeah, they were contacted for the Board of Zoning Appeals, or, or I'm sorry, for the Regional Planning Board and for this meeting as well. And nobody complained? Oh. Thank you, sir. Mr. Leisner. Derek, how long has this property been inside the city limits? A long time, I imagine. <laughs> okay. The mm -hmm. question is to how this one slipped through the cracks. Well, I think uh, if you want to throw the grandfather clause in as it was used as a church, it was grandfathered in. Now that the use has changed, it didn't to fall in, into place. Requirement. Good, Mr. Weissner? Good. Good. Yeah, Mr. Grimm, I was at the planning, uh, the planning meeting for this other stuff. There was a few residents that showed up, but they were all, you know, they weren't it wasn't real negative or anything. They were just more there to ask questions so they could, you know, educate themselves more about what was going in, you know, rumors flying around and things like that. But it was, I think they walked away happy, so. Right. Mr. Mayor? Sir? I'm always glad to welcome new business. Now I move that we accept the zoning variance with the stipulations that they connect to the city water within 90 days. Second. Sewer. City sewer. I'm sorry, city sewer. Motion by Mr. Graham, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Cook. What were the stipulations again? Just connect to the sewer. <laughs> yeah, just connect to the sewer and then they've got some uh, the signage, uh, signage that they are working on. So are we doing both of the recommendations from the planning director? Yes. Yes. Okay. So is there anything else to prove the fire system? Hang on. My one thing on that, that's an I mean, how many of this project is a mess, and we took the worst time of the year to go down to the sewer install, did they fall through the high street? I don't, I don't know that. 
it's the ordinances specify straight up 90. If there's something that um, we may need to discuss because of weather, or materials, something like that. I don't know, does it read must be or maybe? Because it's been on what's the qualifying legal term with it. If it's shall or must, he's going to have to do it in 90 days. If it says may, that would indicate that we can say we're going to have a high age or extend. So it's really how about, how how about weather conditions permitting? It, it doesn't, if the code say may or, or shall, it's, and there's no other stipulations after that, it's pretty black and white that it has to be done within 90 days. So what's the word, Mr. Hutchinson? I mean, obviously you can't control mother nature at times. But we've also communicated that this need to be done by the But when you bought the turf back in the day, we just let them as well. <clears throat> I mean, if we can sway it, we can't. We just kind of Within a reasonable space, good time. Mm -hmm. So can we, can I change it, or do we have to amend it? Well, he's looking at the actual wording on the books, because it'll be what it's what it's it'll be what our rules are, regardless of what we say. Yeah, that's what we got to look at. Right. Like if it says may, then they can say yeah. We get, but if it says shall or must, those are going to be pretty pretty fine words. I see them. I see them. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> brought to you by Glacier Mist. <laughs> but this is brought to you by the city of New I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, this has been umpteen years it's been out there. I know. Wow. I appreciate it. Hold on, man. No, I just think it's Especially this time of year. I mean, obviously, once it open, but. You know, uh, and we want it. I mean, we want this big. We want the yeah. sales tax from it. And, well, know, here's the thing. We do it. Yeah. Well, then, I mean, what, what are they using now? This is an septic tank? Huh? I don't know. I thought it was septic. No, I'm going to read the whole paragraph. So when they get the sewer line in, they're going to have to pull that tank out, too. They can't just get it set. You got it, Mr. Kiko? Yeah. Okay. So under section 1042.03, use of public sewers required, uh, subsection D, the owner of any house, building, or property used for human occupancy, employment, recreation, or other purposes situated within the area under the jurisdiction of the authority and abutting any street, alley, or right-of-way in which there is now located or may in the future be located. A public sanitary sewer of the authority is hereby required at his or her expense to install suitable toilet facilities therein and to connect such facilities directly to public sanitary sewer in accordance with the provisions of this chapter within 90 days after the date of official notice to do so, provided that such street, alley, or right-of-way is within 200 feet of the foundation walls of such house, building, or other property that is usable for human occupancy. If the connection to the sanitary sewer is not complete within 90 days after the date of official notice to do so, the authority shall then proceed to make such connection at the expense of the owner. The authority shall pursue recovery of connection charges through Court of Common Pleas Court of Clark County. After said 90 day period has elapsed, the authority shall, shall charge the owner and then current sanitary sewer charges in effect and shall collect the same in accordance with this chapter. Okay, so what, what, what's it take to, um, what's, it, what's it take to change that? I mean, you really going to do that? Well, yeah, I mean, it's been, that church has been there for how long, and now we've got a business going into it, and we want to time in 90 days coming into winter? That because makes sense. You have, you have in your code, you have non conforming uses. So when the church was is what it is, it was probably like that. But since he tanked, took it over, and he changed it, he now has to adhere to our current code. I'm not, yeah, no, I, I don't have a problem with that, mm -hmm. but I agree with what he said. Rolling into winter, I mean, if you're getting, you know, but whatever it may be. Know when he bought that church, that he would have to do that. How long ago did you let Mr. Hensley know? It was, at the, it was well when they bought the church. I don't forget how many years ago. So it's not like we just pulled them a couple of days ago. But here's the, here's the, I mean, you guys can do what you want. My, I, I'm a policy advisor, you guys, and that's what I'll do. If you're going to change it, 
you're going to set president. I don't want to. I don't want to change it. As far as the 90 days, I just think there should be a stipulation of like something like weather. I mean, if it's obviously it's a monsoon for, you know, we've seen weather where you could stop that kind of work, and there should be some stipulation in there for something like for the yeah for the severity of the project. So the first question we should be asking Mr. Pico is how complex of a, of a project is this? How complex of a project is this? I've I've seen it go in year round. No, uh, so how far is the church from the sewer? Two hundred fifty feet. Pike, yeah, Pike Street's two hundred. Lake Street, which has sewer on it as well, is one hundred fifty-two. So Lake Street is twenty-one feet deep. So the line on Lake Street is on the pool side of Lake? Correct. And on Pike Street, it's on the center of the lake. Center of the lake. Well, it's only 12 feet deep. So the hole only have to be half the size of the pool. You tear up out front of a swimming pool, it's going to show the whole road out. So it's going to be half of the size of the pool. And what did you say, what did the ordinance say about 200 feet? 200 feet within any roadway, alley, public uh, street. So since you've 152 closest to this one? Lake. Lake. And there is no language in here that would allow you guys to get any sort of extension and it would set pretty much within 90 days. So in order for you guys to make changes on that, you'd have to go, we would go through the regulatory process. This is not under the planning and zoning code, so we can have an ordinance to you. I have to go through the same period as any other ordinance introduced and then wait and then vote it on and then a 15 day waiting period. And how long ago did you buy the church? I can do it that day. You want to try? I'll do it that day. As long as you guys are going to get calls, the phone number is going to be set. You're talking about the rain and snow. Where, where, I mean, I mean, how far into Pike Street are we looking at? Is it just a couple of houses so we can still get? To Pike from when we when we talked some time ago, Pike was going to be pump. You were going to put in a grinder. Lake, which is uh, I think it's only four feet deep on Lake, straight across out of the parking lot where we ran that new. And this came up when we ran a new eight inch SDR down Lake Street. Um, I believe it's only about four foot deep right there. Now the manhole that it sits in the middle of Lake and Brubaker, that is deep. The manhole is deep. But there are there's a lateral that comes in it. I think at about four or five feet. So, so, so let me ask, let me ask you this: What one? Which one would you recommend, Tyler? Me, I I pump into the lake. It, I mean, it's shorter, and I would directional drill and, and pump it in over there. So. Yeah, where the SDR comes down, almost like straight out from your building. To your ground sign straight out and then straight into the lake. Well, I'm, I'm still moving. Still moving. No, I agree. I agree. I think it's about four. I, I'd have to look in the plan tomorrow. If, if, if we can do but four, I don't think it's that I don't think it's that deep. Well, it's not like ten and twelve. But I could pull up the Lake Avenue, I'm East Lake Plain. Because we laid new sewer line present. down through Lake Street oh, in the curb line. Like, no, but that, that sewer is over in the curb line by the library. I mean, so if he can open while still doing it. Down at the bottom, but that's that's the main coming from Northampton. It feeds everything from Brubaker. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but so I can now, pull up the East Lake plans and uh, verify that depth of that. We can get table. around Lake a lot easier than we can Pike. So how long is Lake Avenue close. be closed? Lake Avenue wouldn't have to be closed if you directional drill to the curb lawn. You can pothole and open up over on the other side in the curb lawn, where that. Uh, Sewer runs down. Okay. Well, I and I was into the understanding just recently. This is just a recent development. How long ago did you tell him, Derek, about the 90 days? It was at the purchase of the oh 90. I just sent it out. I think Thursday or something. The official form. The official form. 
Oh, okay. You got it today. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And how long ago did you buy the building? What's that? I'm sorry. How long ago did you buy the building? How long? I don't, I don't know how long it's been. But you're saying you just got the notice about the 90? You just got the official report. I just got about hooking into the waste in X amount of time today? So we let him know when he bought the building that he needed to do it. He just got the official order today. Okay. Yes, so we know that last week. Okay. And I would say my motion would stand over here. Anyone else? So we got the motion to accept the stipulation. I only got a, a grin for the first. So the motion is to accept the code, the zoning change with the, the stipulations connect to sewer within 90 days and to have all zoning approved permits approved by it. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I want him to open before 90 days. Yeah, I want him to open right now. <laughs> you got your second one, Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Okay. Um, how, okay, so when you guys bought the building and the, and the, the conversation, however it was done, the conversation about hooking into the waste, how was that done? Just casual, yeah. casual conversation? Was it just? He can open before the 90 days. Yeah, yeah no, I, yeah, I understand, yeah, I understand yeah, that. Yeah, he can open. I just he has, I, has that done in 90 days. As long as all the zoning permits are all. Yes. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, he no, can, he can open without connecting. Yes, in. yes, okay. yes. Okay, okay. Yes. okay. All right. And the reason I was saying I, I want to open is I, I'm saying if the, if the current motion didn't pass, then he couldn't open, is what I'm getting at, correct? Well, then the zoning wouldn't be changed. Then the zoning wouldn't change. So you have to redo the motion without the stipulation. Right, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So if it did not pass because of a concern with the 90-day issue that's attached to it, then he couldn't know. That's why I was, okay. So. Yeah, so we clear he can open within the 90 days. He just can't open it with the commission. Okay. So uh, can one of you answer that one for me? How was that handled? Just a conversation? You remember, sir? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right, any other comments or questions? We have the motion and the second. When you're ready, sir. Okay. Uh, second was by Ms. Eggleston, so we'll start with Councilman Okowski. Yes. Councilman Rodewall. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. <coughs> Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. And Councilman Grimm. Yes. Okay, so the zoning will be changed. Uh, and Mr. Hensley, we look forward to uh, having that business in town and working with you. Um, but the stipulations were connected to the sewer in 90 days and have all your permits to the prior open. Yeah, so when is your official opening day? Black Friday sales coming? Awesome. <laughs> Wait a minute, Saturday? You won't be able to open. You have to go back in front of the BZA to get your signs approved. December 6th is the next plant BZA hearing. Because you need a variance for your signs. That's correct, Mr. Hutchinson? Unless you take there's one on the wall, you take them down or cover them up. No, I'm not taking them down so you can open, but that's part of the stipulation they just passed. Mr. Hutchinson stated before they voted that you'd have some additional sign variances you have to go through. And the next planning board meeting is not until December 6th. I mean, BZA is not. Well, that'd be a variance, right? No. You can actually go back no. and count. <laughs> yeah. As long as we, yeah, long as we have time to notify. Yeah. notify the yeah. So which signs need the variance? This ground sign's fine, right? The ground sign's fine. The proposed one on the wall is good, but your three window-covered ones, those exceed. I sent you in, in uh, 
uh, Ash, Ashland uh, email today that those. Can you guys amend your motion to allow them to open, just not have the signs run within like 90 days to, so we're not prohibiting this? I'm all about it. You make the motion? Make the motion. Um, yeah. Amend, amend, the, amend the motion to allow them to have the final signs done within a time period so you can open on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Is that when you're trying to open, Mark? Because if not, he's going to wait. There's no way around it. It's December 6th, and then. Yeah, and then we'll miss it. Yeah. But didn't Derek just really say. We don't have any wiggle room with it. It's not normally customary stuff that we would do, but. Didn't he just say the sign in the street? And the yard is okay. Yeah, it's the window signs he has up, so he'd either have to cover them up or take them down. He has four. He has there's four signs installed, but not permitted. That haven't been permitted yet without approval. So he'll have to come back to you guys on December sixth to get those variances approved. Are they just in the window? Well, they're not windows anymore. They're sheets of aluminum that block the windows. Oh, okay. They so are. they're they're installed. Okay. Um, All right. So someone want to make a motion to do so? So you guys want to make a motion? Don't move. I'm waiting. That's where I'm waiting. I mean, what, what's how, do you, how do you exactly want to? A motion to amend, or a motion, well, you say it, you made it. I can't speak for you. <laughs> Let's amend the motion to whatever matters and get this gentleman in the business. Okay, so you already have a motion that's passed that has the acceptance. So to be good official, you probably, can you undo a motion that you just done? I'm not your clerk, I have no idea. But you already have a motion to set. So you have to amend the previous motion that already passed. So you have to just make a motion to erase that previous motion and start over? I think you can just make, you can make, we've amend done it in the past, make a motion to amend. Motion to amend. So Mr. Cook had the first motion to amend. And the amendment is to permit him to have, to open with his signs. So what kind of time frame do you guys want to put on to have his final sign approved? What's realistic? Not long. Mr. Hutchinson? To go through BZA and come back, so 30 days? Mm. Two months? Well, let's make it as long as what it has been for the city to discover that we got a building without a sewer. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> if, I can, if I can just add. We're going off the codes that you guys approved. I so could, realistically, 12-6 is the next time you can get it. So I would just make the motion to within the next 30 days for him to have his signs done. Because he's going to go, they're going to go get all the paperwork done. He'll be back here December 6th. 30 days. 30 days. And these aren't city-made issues here. These um, are he's, I've been working with. Mark, since he came up with this idea, and I just got the permits Friday. It's been very frustrating. Um, he's had plenty of time to get the stuff in to me and, and wait to the, the day before, pretty much, to get the stuff in. So um, the signs were up without approval um, after they were told they were shown. Um, 30 days. 30 days. So we have first motion by Vice Mayor Cook. We second. need a second motion? Second. We will just go down with Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilwoman Okowski. Yes. Uh, Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Uh, we'll do Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice uh, Councilman Grimm. Yes. And Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Motion passes. You're free to open, but you got to have your sign committed uh, in 30 days prior. Um, 30 days from today's date, we have to have done. All right. Thank, All you. Right. Thank you, Mr. Thank Bridge. You. Thank you, Mr. Hutchinson. Hensley, Brady Bunch. Thank you. So. All right. Moving on, um, Mr. Hutchinson. That's all you had, I believe, this evening. Or at least uh, as far as yeah, as far as the communications. Yeah. All right. So we drop down to the city manager's report, Mr. Bridge. All right. And uh, we'll see if we've got here. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of public. Uh, we will start in front. Yeah. Oh, here's your hands. Yeah, I can see down there. Uh, we'll start the scene manager report by the police report with, um, it says Sergeant Lehman, I'm sorry, but Deputy Harris. Yeah, he's Deputy Harris. Oh, that one does. <laughs> I, I'm not responsible for one that, oh, that one. 
Um, so these stats would be from the month of October. Um, during the month of October, we patrolled 4,361 miles. Uh, took 166 calls for service. Uh, took 42 reports on those calls and uh, assisted with 50 calls outside of the city of New Carlisle. Uh, we had 16 criminal arrests out of those calls, uh, seven felonies, uh, seven misdemeanors, and then nine warrant arrests. A couple of those warrant arrests were outside of the city of New Carlisle. Um, we had 84 traffic stops. Uh, from those 84 traffic stops, 46 of them resulted in uh, warnings and 38 resulted in citations. Uh, there was 271 business checks throughout the shifts and 152 citizen contacts, uh, contacts outside of uh, calls for service. Anyone have any questions? Council, any questions? Yes. Sir. The accident, Main and Jefferson. Sure. Are you investigating that or is the OS, Ohio State Patrol? Uh, so I've uh, finished my with my criminal charges on it. Um, I was the uh, officer, first officer on scene. Um, sure. um, criminal charges were filed and uh, the, the crash uh, report has been completed. Charges of? Um, so she was charged with um, reckless operation, um, running the red light, failure to control, uh, assured clearing distance ahead, no operator's license, uh, might be missing one, but. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Harris. Any other questions, Tom? Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. No problem. Back to you, Mr. Bridge. And thank you, Deputy Harris. And moving on with the city manager's report on fire and, fire and EMS report by Fire Chief Chief, uh, Chief C. Trustee. Council, citizens, uh, for the month of October, New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 74 EMS calls in the city, 33 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 12 fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. We had five EMS calls. Uh, answered mutual aid by Pike Township for Bethel Park, good medic 52 being our response. We answered three mutual aid calls for Pike Township and four mutual aid calls for Bethel Park. Uh, we are still doing hydrant flushings. We are in Area D, we're just about completed. Uh, the division would also like to thank the Dollar General store here in the city. Uh, every year they do this for us, they collect or uh, put a, a, a container out for the citizens to buy bags of candy and put in it, and then they donate that to us to hand out to the kids on Halloween night. Uh, and they did that again this year. It was a really good uh, turnout for us. Did really well. Uh, and on another good note, we just found out today that we will take receipt of our new staff car tomorrow morning. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. That's a nice one. Right, Council, any questions for the guy right now? <laughs> <laughs> Any questions or comments for Chief Trustee? Council? No? All right. Thank you for the report, Chief. We appreciate it. Keep up a good good work. Mr. Bridge. Thank you. And moving, thank you, Fire Chief. Moving on to the C Manager Report, our finance report with our finance director, Ms. Colleen Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Council, and members of the public. Uh, the finance report for the month of October Would that account for the million and a half we're ahead on revenues over 
uh, expected revenue? Um, income, income tax? Yeah, that's, that's included in the revenue. But that's a big chunk of it? It's 13% um, of the increase over the last year, but for the, it is the majority of our income from the general Because I'd like to know how we, how we ended up with more money than we thought we would, and we might want to do that. Well, do every <laughs> well, I think it's we it's like it's because we started getting past records. Is that what you said? Yes. Yeah. So the income tax is doing more collections. That okay. is up. Um, and then we, we did have some grant money this year that wasn't as we uh, expected in the beginning of our budget process. So we're, we're running well ahead of our estimate. Cool. <laughs> I'm done. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, <coughs> second by Ms. Nowakowski to accept finance report. Councilman Rubel. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Uh, Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Passes six to zero. Thank you. Thank you. When you're ready, Mr. Bridge. All right. Thank you, Ms. Harris. So moving on to the city manager report or service report with Mr. Howard. All right. Good evening, Mayor, Council, members of the public. Um, under Public Works Department, we well, obviously we had authorized a contract for the paint downtown. They were going to try and do it this week. Um, they're swamped like everybody else. I'm going to go with probably springtime. But at least we have them. We're on their books at some point to, to get those... Um, Space is painted. Our dirt patching is complete as far as using the dirt patcher, but still, please call in for potholes. Uh, we're going to be picking up a couple tons of cold patch. We do have a few spots that we need to get uh, to do some potholes until the spring. Leaf pickup has begun. Um, please do not park on leaf piles near where we collect them. Um, the only alternate way for uh, leaves really is to mulch them and put them in your trash. The city currently does not have, since the demolition of the Madison Street School, have a drop-off point where we have a property where people can back in without, you know, getting in the mud or anything like that. We just don't have a location at this point. We we did find a location for us to dump them since we've lost both nurseries. We lost our big place to dump leaves. Uh, we do have a business that is accepting uh, the leaves right now. We just don't know how many years, you know, we'll do it or can plan on it. So. Um, we'll try for next year to find a place maybe where we can have a leaf drop off site. I do, we've been getting a ton of calls at the front office and we're just explaining them, just, you know, put them out to the curve. We're just trying to make as many rounds as we can. Um, the, the schedule out there is, you know, it is a guide. Uh, this, the leaf did decide to fall at once this year. So <laughs> yeah. our first round of pickups weren't really that productive. So, um, you know, it's hard to fight in, uh, mother nature. As far as under water department, uh, we do have a contract um, pretty much lined up to take care of those uh, foundations from the old Adam Street Tower demo. They're just gonna do it as a winter project. They, they're still trying to button up all their um, summer projects and then they can get us when they really have nothing to do. Uh, sewer department, as you guys had passed that emergency ordinance for that other clarifier, that is one of the two that we were gonna do. The other one that will be coming in front of you is a bid. Uh, because the one is out now, I can do an emergency. The next one will become um, through is on a bid process. I do already have the um, specs uh, drafted. We'll put that out for bid, and then you guys will be brought in ordinance to award a contractor that bid to put the second one in. Um, so they'll be coming to you soon. And again, the OPWC grant for the 50% is to cover the uh, half of the primary number two. So by the by the time we get to end of 22 into 23, we should have all four of those uh, or two primaries and two secondary clarifiers um, replaced with very limited. I mean, when I say we got almost uh, you know eight hundred thousand dollars worth, fifty thousand or less in city funds is what I'm seeing right now, unless steel prices keep going through the roof because I'm already 16,000 more on this clarifier than I was a year ago. Um, so it just keeps climbing. So we'll see where we're at when it actually comes time for the bidding. Uh, Fenwick phase one from Scott to Kennison is complete except for the curb lawn. It does have, it has been topsoil and seeded. Um, 
seeds probably it's a little late for germination, so they're going to cover it up. They'll be back in the spring. Um, they are going to uh, come back in the spring, reseed, and straw it. Um, I do have a performance bond, or a, I'm sorry, a warranty bond on that if they don't, but we've had contractors have to do it before, come back in the spring, and so we do have leverage if they decided to not. Or we have a bond that we can go against if they were to fall, go, uh, go under as a business. And then Clark County resurfacing project, those are complete. The only thing we do have left, and the Clark County <laughs> Engineer's Office is going to help us out with this. They do have a truck still with a burn box on the back that will lay some gravel down along some of that South Scotch Street that does not have curb and gutter. So uh, talking with the county engineer, they're going to be in probably within the next couple weeks uh, to help them out. So, And that is uh, all I have on my report. I can entertain any questions on it or anything else going on with the city. Council. Yes, sir. A resident complained about Tal Schroyer and Short Street. I drove up there, it was a bit rough, but no worse than any of the other, some of the other streets there in town. Refresh my memory, what did we do with Cal Shore and Short Street? Uh, so we chip sealed those because they're extremely short and very limited use of roads. And by nature, chip seal is a rougher drive than asphalt. There, there's just no doubt about it. Um, we've had a couple main brakes on a two inch, um, actually three, all within six feet of each other. So right now I'm gathering some information. I might be replacing that main that goes up Hillcrest next to Water Dog. Uh, when we were cutting that out, we have um, almost three inches of asphalt. It's just aged. So by putting chip seal on it, you're hoping to seal it and get you know five, maybe seven, eight years out of it before you develop potholes and then you can get to resurfacing with it doing a mill and fill that we're doing through a lot of these other streets. So that wouldn't cure the the rough. The, just the just the you've driven down chip seal road this is the same thing but when you're going fast you don't feel it as much drive slow on this stuff and depend on what vehicle you're in yeah i'm sure you don't go very fast no it, it's you almost like you, you, feel, down you feel every rock i mean they are yeah. they're not a round rock it's all crush nines um, it looks like almost like a gravel road but it's really not kind of yeah. Yeah. thank you thanks sir else? thank you mr kitko we appreciate the report sir and back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And moving on with the planning and zoning report, uh, Mr. Hutchinson, planning director. Council and citizens, uh, tonight uh, we have mm -hmm. your code compliance stats. Uh, we're at 551 violations this year. Uh, code summary activity report, we're at 1,048 activity that includes inspections, reinspections, communications. Uh, zoning, uh, at time this report, 94 zoning applications here today for a little longer right now. The planning and the BCA mm -hmm. just uh, took care of the beginning of this meeting, so those are done. Um, economic development, uh, if anybody has ever been down to 210 or down Pike Street, 210 Pike Street is on the whole of the room. Uh, as soon as they finish filling that and see the stall, we are going to put it over to the old substation on the so the uh, 210 Pike Street is, is gone. Uh, tooling Center, we added last week, we added a uh, wood chipper malter. I uh, tried it out out there, at, at, or down here at the park, and it looks pretty good. It takes up three inch diameter uh, branches, feeds through, and then malt leaves, twigs. Uh, it's gas powered, pretty strong. Heavy though, so if anybody's interested in borrowing that, you can know, truck these two guys or, or Hoping to continue to keep adding bigger and better tools on there. So. Awesome. Yep, so that's all I have. Uh, take any questions? Council, any questions? No, no questions. On the uh, chip uh, mm -hmm. uh, we should have we should have an announcement pretty soon. There can you I have that actually to talk about I'll interrupt, but can you I'll get yeah, that yeah, here in a second. Feel. I have it online to talk to you. Yeah. Right. Still my thumb. I didn't see it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hutchinson, for the update and report, sir. Back to you, Mr. Bridge. All right, and under informational items, we have discussion topics. Uh, council at the, at the CIP, you guys wanted us to put money in for new entryway signs, which was awesome use of public funds. We're excited about that. However, I don't feel comfortable designing those on my own. So uh, what I'm going to do is maybe after the first year, we'll all get together. Um, Springfield actually is installing new entryway signs now. I was up there uh, last week, so I did snap a picture of theirs. 
uh, just to get an idea. But that's a big, big project that I want everyone to be on board with because there's a, the signs coming to the city. So um, after the first year, let's just get through this because they're expend expendable in 2022. We'll get together and decide how we want to move forward with those. Um, the other thing is council manager lunch meeting. I do believe those start within. I had a question on that last topic. Oh, gotcha. if you don't mind, sorry. Mm -hmm. On the uh, on the city signs, and, and I was uh, doing the same thing. I was googling other city signs and just trying to get some ideas. But um, I had called Mr. Bridge um, last week, or I don't know when it was. I called you. The sign that's next to Hensley Park, you have know, a big tall one. It's wood. Um, you know, it's got the big city New Palau and all the churches. Um, I guess there was a question of who owns that actual st structure or sign. I don't know who owns it. I mean, I know the city's always <laughs> taken care of it for the most part, correct, Allie? I mean, yeah, I'd have to look. We yeah, we've just been maintaining the lights uh, or whatever. And paint. So that we haven't been maintaining actual sign, just the light. Right. I think some maybe at some point we put some paint on. But my question is, okay, so I don't know if that's something that Mr. Kitko or Mr. Bridge would be able to find out who actually owns it. But you know, how does? Correct. That was actually put up by twelve years ago. Okay. Jack's part was the one that actually put everything together. Okay. okay. And uh, it's been maintained to a degree. I know I've done some work for it. I know the brother has done work on the sign itself. It does need work. Uh, I live right across from it. So I see people there all the time wanting to take pictures and so forth. And we're visiting New Carolina, I think it would be beneficial to try and make that as pristine as possible. I agree. If that's something that could be done, I would certainly appreciate it. And I think that's a benefit to the city. Is it given to the city by Sertoma? Well, I mean, it's a public park, so I would assume that they have. I don't know if there's any record of that or not, but I know uh, Jack Spark was the one years ago. Okay. <coughs> would council, on my two senses, would council entertain the idea of asking the city manager to check with uh, maybe Eggleston Signs or whoever, uh, and getting just, a, I, don't, I don't know if it needs tore down and rebuilt, but at least refurbished. Well, here's the thing. So if it's not ours, we can't expend any public dollars to fix it. So we're going to find record that it was donated to us some way, shape, or form, but if it's not, we're trying to look on GIS right now, and it looks like the GIS page is down, and it looks like it's right outside the parcel of the park, like right outside the top. So as long as it's ours, we can do that. Mm -hmm. But if it's not, we're going to find some paperwork to either get it donated to us or find past paperwork that says it was. Well, if we put money into it with lights and paint in the past, then I'm assuming it's ours. So we've been breaking it. mean it was done correctly. The light, the light, the light on top of it. Here's another thing. You guys allocated $40,000. <clears> you should probably focus on your entryway signs and worry about that one later on because the bulk of that 40 Gs is going to come out with your entryway signs. Those are not. And those are your entryway and signs of the city. That's their first impression. So another thing with that, with that, is that up yet? <laughs> I think it lists a bunch of churches on that. Yeah, that's nice. Doesn't it? Okay. Nice. Yeah, well, so so how is that a entryway sign to the city? Because that's what council approved for, designed for entryway signs in the city. It doesn't say welcome to New Carlisle. So my suggestion is council that yeah, if we can we can put money into it, we definitely should. I think we should find out what the legality of it is and maybe do that on a different kind of budget line item because that forty D is gonna go real quick with your entryway signs. Well that's what I was asking them. I didn't know if they wanted to ask you to get a, a ballpark price to refurbish it and go from there, but that's okay. We'll make that in the motion. Well, we talked about the sign that says New Carolina established 1810. Yeah. Right next to the tall one, right across the from the tall one has got all the signs on it. The metal one. Is the, well, it's wood with metal church signs on it. You said it's outside of the park. I'm trying to see if it's in the parcel of the park located. Is it separate, is it separate from the Hensley Park sign? Or the 
That's what we're trying to figure out. It's like like the barrier for Hensley Park where the, the uh, gravel stops. It's like right on the opposite side of the hill where it slopes down. We'll see if there's Bruce, but it doesn't give any information on this. I don't remember this being ours. This is. Why is it? Because there's a sign, there's a flagpole. Yeah. All right. Well, Mr. Cook made a motion. Does anybody want to second it? Yeah. What's the motion? City manager to look into the renovation of that sign, the pricing, etc. Is that second by Ms. Eggleston? And the renovation is just repair what's wrong? Yeah, just, uh, to, I would, well, it's your motion. <laughs> to come up with some figures, facts and figures on what it would cost to renovate that sign. Okay. Make it look nice. Make it look halfway decent so that we're not looking at a bunch of crap coming into town. <coughs> Is that something you can figure out, Mr. Kitko or Mr. Hutchins? I mean, who actually, <coughs> where it lies and what the... We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. Any, anyone else? When you're ready, sir. I have a motion by Cook. Yeah, we had the second by Mr. Or Ms. Eggleston. I'm sorry, I thought you had heard it. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Mrs. Nowakowski? Yeah. Council Nowakowski? Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Uh, Councilman Grimm? Yes. Uh, Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. And Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Motion passes six to zero for me to look into the renovation of the Hensley Park sign. Right. Back to you, sir, when you're ready. All right, so design for interior signs at the first year. I think we should get together um, just to get that down. The council manager lunch, I do believe that's taking place next week um, or the week after. So part of that was council was to select a third member to go uh, since uh, we will not have a meeting prior to that. Uh, regular meeting prior to the lunch meeting, you guys should probably go ahead and make a motion that she is going to be joining you for that. Yep. So, anyone want to first volunteer? I don't know if you're busy. Okay. Ms. Eggleston? Yeah. Okay. Is that okay with the rest of the council? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. When will that be? I got to look at the calendar. <laughs> the 19th. Is that when it is? Okay, I got a first on that. Need a motion. So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Grimm. All right, uh, Mrs. Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. And Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Awesome. Motion passes six to zero. Right. And moving on to see a managed report, water shot off. We will be working on that. Uh, we'll probably start that probably after the third of the year to have something to council about uh, how much we shut off. We bought that to you guys a couple weeks, a couple meetings ago. So we're still, uh, we haven't started working <coughs> on that, but we will. Wi Fi at the shoulder house. We now have Wi Fi here. So if anybody wants to, we have public Wi Fi, so you're more than welcome to join on to that. It's, um, Casey, is there a password for that? It'll automatically just go. Okay, so um, we'll put the Wi-Fi pack, public Wi-Fi on the wall, and they're coming, they're just going through it. Us, we're just doing automatic. What's the range on that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's where it's placed currently? Yeah. I would probably get quickly out in the parking lot and not put it outside the door. Just want you know, to make sure that, you know, maybe some local. Yeah. We've already. It's only, it's, yeah. it's only on 8, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Ah, so it sets that. off overnight. Yep. And then the CHIP and Peninsula New Shelter House update, we will have a response to Council on CHIP on December 13th. 
Uh, we have been informed, but we are not allowed to say anything until then. Um, and we do not have any update on the potential new shelter house. Um, so we're still waiting on information from that. Our utility clerk position was offered to Colleen Ray. She was uh, a contract employee that we had for about eight months in the city. Um, so we did offer her that position. Um, and then Angela will move back into her central cashier position. But we are excited to have Ms. Ray. She is a University of Dayton graduate, a very intelligent young lady. Uh, we got a lot of uh, a lot of compliments from her while she was in the front window, and we're excited to see what she can bring to the city with her skill sets. Upcoming legislation for council employees generally code section update uh, that will come after negotiations because the actual negotiation uh, results need to be codified. So there's no sense of doing it now when we already change it in a couple of months. Later. So that's all I have for the city manager report. We'll be happy to entertain any questions for you. Thanks, sir. Council, any questions for Mr. Bridge? the date was on that chip? December 13th. <coughs> Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, as always, sir. Much appreciated. All right. Moving on. Comments from members of the public. If you have any questions or comments, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address for the record and keep it to five minutes. All right. We got that one covered. Mr. Sir. My name's Law McLaughlin. I'm at 327 South Main Street. Um, I just wanted to thank all of you for all the hard work that you're doing for this city. And I mean all of you. The financial report is probably the best financial report that I've ever seen. And I was on this council for 17 years, so. I just want to commend all of you for that, and Colleen, you've done a wonderful job on putting this together. And, um, at one time, as you well know, this city was not looking real good as far as continuing. So this is just fantastic to see that and see what kind of money is available to help make it a better city for all of us. So thank you all for all your hard work. That means all the council and all the staff, and God bless you all. So. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, committee reports done tonight. We'll hand it back over to the acting clerk for resolutions. All right, where are we at? We're talking way about that side. <laughs> Resolutions. Thank you. Mr. Clerk. We all know I'm not good at this, so <laughs> I don't know why we're shot. All right, so resolution. So we have resolution 21, 2021-17. Uh, resolutions are introduced and voted on the same night, most cases. Uh, so we have resolution 2021-17 20, arts, introduction to public and hearing action tonight. That is a resolution authorizing the finance director to open a, to open to open bank accounts for the city of New Carlisle and Mayor's Court. Council. So move. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Nowakowski. And explanation of this ordinance. Um, we realized about a couple weeks ago that we had to have some a few additional legislation pieces for the mayor's court opening a bank account was one of them, of course, to fund the house of money on. So we had to figure out if the employees would be actual employees of the city or contract employees of the city. So we figured that out, and that's why we're here tonight, because the clerk will be an employee of the city. She'll manage that bank account. Uh, and for the internal control procedures, Colleen will reconcile the bank account. So we've got two different hands in the pot. Um, the clerk will only be able to sign checks from there, which will have a signature, a resolution for signatory activities. So that's the explanation of this ordinance. Awesome. And we will start with Councilman Roadwall. Yes. Uh, Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilwoman Okowski. Yes. And Vice Mayor. Yes. Motion pa uh, or resolution passes six to zero. Mm -hmm. And then we have resolution 2021-18R. And that is a resolution adding authorized signatories for the mayor's court bank accounts of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. So moved. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Vice Mayor Cook. Uh, 
Uh, Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Uh, Councilwoman Eagleson? Yes. Passes six to zero. And then I will read the other two resolutions. Now, these actually are a two read resolution because we are amending CIPs. So when we do that, it is a two read system. So we have resolution 2021-19R, that is introduction to tonight, public hearing and action on 12621. That is a resolution amending resolution 2020-21R, the capital improvement program for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, for the purpose, pur pur purpose of removing a capital purchase. We also have resolution 2021-20R, that is introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-6-2021. That is a resolution amending resolution 2021-15R, the capital improvement program for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, for the purpose of removing a capital purchase. Okay, we're moving on to ordinances. So we have ordinance 2021-41 that was introduced on November 1st, 2021, public hearing action tonight. That is an ordinance expending an ordinance, an ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds over $20,000 for the purpose of upgrading the city of New Carlisle's utility building software program. Who do you accept? Second. First by Mr. Grimm, second by Ms. Eggleston. Uh, explanation to this ordinance. Um, this is to upgrade our utility building software to VIP. We had done two other sections a couple years ago. Uh, this upgrade is accounted for in the 2021 appropriations. Any discussion, Council? When you're ready. Uh, Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Eagleston? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Passes 6 to 0. We have ordinance 2021-43, introduction to ninth public. Wait a minute. Oh, we got on 46. We already did 46, right? Help with that? Yeah, we did that prior. We did the motion earlier. Yep, so I think we're good with legislation. Yep, we're just going to do the reads. Okay, uh, ordinance 2021-43, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-6-2021. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of water softening rock salt. We also have ordinance 2021-44, introduction tonight, public and hearing action on 12-6-2021. An ordinance to establish appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the <coughs> city of New Carlisle, state of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2022. We have ordinance 2021-45, introduction tonight, public and hearing, public hearing and action on uh, December 6, 2021. That is an ordinance amending chapter 248 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle uh, regarding city policy. And we have ordinance 2021-47, introduction tonight, public and hearing action on 12-6, 2021. That is an ordinance amending chapter 246 of the codified ordinance of the city of New Carlisle regarding the city employee health insurance waiver cash out fund. All right, good job. Good job. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And then moving down to other business, uh, additional city business, city offices will be closed Thursday, November 25th, and Friday, November 26th for Thanks Thanksgiving. And then anything else open for city discussion? Yeah. Yes. A question I forgot I was going to ask Mr. Kitko, how are we set for road salt? We got about three quarters of a barn right now, and uh, and we have an agreement for 2022 rock salt. So, no, we're good. Awesome. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of citizens contact me. Um, the guys on the light poles down the main street. Mm -hmm. There are several that are torn up. They get torn up in that day, but they'll be they get replaced for the next for the next time they go up. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Council, anything else? All right, well, I'm gonna do something kinda out of the ordinary here since I assuming our next motion is gonna be adjournment. Um 
Oh, yes, we need to make a motion to excuse Mr. Sauer. Oh, Thank you. Second. I even had it wrote down. <coughs> motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Grimm to excuse Mr. Cotton. You didn't hear that, did you? I did not. I was talking to Mark. Um, let's go through this, but then I'd like to speak on Mark, Mr. Hensley's behalf for a moment. Okay. And what was the motion? Motion to excuse Mr. Cobb was made by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Grimm. Councilwoman Eagleson? Yes. Councilwoman Nokowski? Councilman Rogold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Um, Councilman Grimm? Yes. And Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Motion passes 6 to 0. Mm -hmm. I will hand it to you, Mr. Bridge. Do you want me to talk? Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Hensley approached me, and I, I, I'm just going to just ask Council to make a motion to have me look into tax abatements for the new business. I am not sure if he's going to qualify. Usually these tax abatements are industry specific. More importantly, they're volume specific as far as how much revenue they want to generate, how many jobs they want to generate. So we had a brief discussion on that last time we were talking last week. Um, I have not had time to look, at, look into that. Again, I don't know if he's qualified for it. Um, but that would just be income tax. We can't, we can't grant a property tax because of the county involvement. Right. Um, so I would need a motion uh, council <coughs> to instruct him to look at that. If council would be interested in potentially giving him a tax abatement. So moved. Second. Mr. Vice Mayor with motion. Ms. Nowakowski with your second. Who was the first and second on that? Vice Mayor Cook, and then second by Ms. Nowakowski. Uh, Councilman Robald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Councilwoman yes. Eggleston, sorry. Um, um, no, I'm with uh, Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. No, I'm not. And then Councilman Nocosta. Yes. All right, 6 0. All right, thank you, Mr. Bridge. Um, we've had a couple young audience members back there this evening, which have been like amazingly good for their age. How, how old are they? He's two, he's five. Okay, well, can we get, I'm going to need help hitting this gavel on this. Would the five year old want to come up and do it for me or help me? Yeah, come on up and join this meeting, bro. What's his, what, what's his name? Thomas. Thomas, can you come up here for a minute, buddy? <laughs> come around the back here, if you don't mind. Come over here where this, this uh, trusty, we'll call it a hammer in this case, depending on what your, your motions are. So first of all, we got to ask for an adjournment from council. So I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, so we got a motion from vice mayor and second by Ms. Abelson? Okay, I couldn't remember. It was, okay, so now he's going to call for the vote. So you got the second, Eggleston? Yeah. And then here in a minute, I'll tell you, you take this and you just crack out as hard as you can, all right? And, then and, say, want, and say we're adjourned. And then say we're adjourned. And then if you want to go chase your dad with it, I'm fine. <laughs> when we're ready, sorry. I'm okay. having fun. I'm just enjoying this. All right, so we will start with... And we're going to go with uh, Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. And we will go uh, Councilman Rogold. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilwoman Eagleston. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. We are adjourned. You can hit that as far as you can. Yeah. Good job.